I take a moment to record the assignment videos for HSP 107. The first one we've got is about the multiple choice quiz. This is going to be pretty straightforward. There's really not that much to tell you. Uh, it's more about sort of familiarising um, you with how it works, giving you some tips, that sort of stuff. Remembering that I use the online chat slides to do this presentation. So it's due uh, in week six. We'll give you a two hour, two hour time slot on a particular date. And I'll make sure I let you know by Monday of that week six. Um, as I said before, it's due at the end of week six, Friday the 1st of April, 2016. It's likely to be open at some point over that week, but I'm not sure when yet. Isabel is actually the person that's running it. Um, so she will know more of the details about this particular assessment. There's 40 multiple choice questions, pretty straightforward, and it's weighted at 20%. Um, yep, I've already talked about all that. It's got the 40 questions, because it's worth 20%, they're worth half a mark each. You've got a two hour time limit, okay? The quiz will shut down when you have um, reached that two hour time limit. And whatever questions you haven't answered, they won't get recorded, they'll just be sort of wrong answers, all right? Um, the content of the exam covers weeks one to five, so nothing in week six, all right? It's just weeks one to five. You only get one attempt at the quiz, so take care, take your time. Um, and backtracking is allowed, so if you're finding that you're really struggling with that first question, you can actually go back to that one at the end and finish it off if you're feeling in a better mind frame then. So just bear that in mind. Tips for answering multiple choice um, questions quickly. Start with the questions you can easily answer. That's always a good thing to do. As I said before, backtracking is allowed, so you might be able to move to the ones that you think are a bit easier. Cover the choices, and for this, you, it'll be on the screen. Answer the question yourself, then look at the alternatives and see which one seems to better answer the question. If um, you've prepared for the exam, it's most likely that your initial uh, answer is going to be the correct one. I recently did a multiple choice uh, part of my exam for another unit and I found a lot of people actually answered the question correctly the first time and then changed it. So just be careful with that. You can virtually cross out the choices that are wrong um, so that you can more easily see the choices you have left. Don't skim. Make sure you read the questions really carefully because sometimes the question can be answered on the basis of one key word in, in, the, uh, in the question. Many questions have pairs of answers that look very similar. Okay, look for keywords gives you the focus of what the question's answer asking for. Be sure to read all the choices that you're given. One answer may be more correct than another answer because of its precise detail, so that's very, very important. Look out for words like always, only, all, never, completely. These are what we call absolute terms, and they're more likely to indicate a wrong answer. So bear that in mind when you're thinking through things. Translate double negative statements into positive ones. I've got to say, this for me causes more confusion, so really that's a personal choice, um, but some people say that it reduces confusion overall. Keep in mind that the correct answer is often found in a very, a, pa a pair of very similar answers, all right? So it sort of touches on what I was talking about before. Answer every question unless there is a penalty for wrong answers. I don't know if you know, but there's like a, a basic rule that you can go by. Um, called multiple guess, which is where you just pick B and hope for ev uh, sorry pick B for everything and hope for the best. What you need, you need some quiet, okay? Um, you need a stable internet connection. This is really important. So at the moment, I don't have a stable internet connection at home. I tether on my phone. Definitely not a good idea. Make sure you come into work into uni um, if that's the case. Make sure you've got a clock, all right, so you can keep an eye on the time. Turn off your phone so there's no distractions. 
um, have something to chew on, like some mints or some chewing gum or something, because chewing actually stimulates brain activity. Water, tea, coffee, vodka, if that's your good choice. And sleep is a really good idea so that you're thinking straight. I've given you an example of what they actually look like. Again, this is in the online chat slide for you. You just have to open up and you can see exactly um, an example quiz um, answer. Make sure that you uh, save after every question. That's really, really imperative. If your internet does drop out and you've not completed the quiz, what you should do is, number one, don't panic. We can always work around this stuff. Chances are, <clears throat> I've set the quiz up so that it kind of just hangs there and um, your responses will be there. The coordinator and the Milo team will kind of have to unlock them and make them available to you again. Um, so just bear that in mind, all right? Don't, don't stress about it. Email Isabel, who's the lecturer doing the quiz, and we can go from there. But don't freak out, all right? We're here to help you. That's pretty much it, folks. I hope that was helpful. Good luck with it, and I'll see you all soon. See ya!